So today I wanted to introduce you to my uh, my daily rider bike. Um, last uh, week I uh, I went over this one here, which is uh, the two thousand and five, and then the week before it was this uh, Suzuki GSX seven fifty in the Zuma, which is uh, the bike that I just finished building. Um, although I spoke with that bike there for about maybe 30 minutes, put the video up. Um, there are a number of things on it that I still forgot to mention and uh, hopefully I'll get round to them today. But this one here, um, I built this one uh, first and uh, I went so far with it and then um, and then I, uh, I, I bought, I thought, right, look, I'm going to buy another one and uh, so I bought, I built this one, and um, I wanted to make it into a much more, uh, just a much more sort of everyday, usable, rideable bike. Um, not that that other one isn't, but it's just this one here is uh, much more, um, shall we say, well, there's less money involved in it. And uh, a lot of the parts are um, stock Kawasaki parts. So this is a 2001 ZRX 1200 R. And like with this 05, I had uh, Phil Smith from Crazy Custom Paint in Northern Ireland paint it for me. And he done it once again in the Eddie Lawson replica colours. Um, absolutely fabulous job he done on it uh, as you can see it's absolutely glassy smooth I had him do the stripes on it the other way round where the blue is on the top rather than on this one the white is on the top so the stripes are just flipped and slightly um, uh, just a slightly darker shade of green and a slightly different shade of blue and white than that one. I wanted to differentiate the colours uh, of the bikes slightly <laughs> so, so that it just wouldn't look identical. But uh, as you can see, they are pretty, they are pretty simple. So it's a 2001 and uh, I'll go over some of the parts here on it now. 2001 bike and these are 2001 uh, ZRX stock ZRX forks and uh, wheels no sorry there are 2001 forks yes and the wheels are from this 2005 bike because I had switched out the wheels on that bike to uh, carbon fiber so these are the white wheels that I had had refurbished for that bike initially and um, I'd had them professionally painted and uh, and uh, you know rather than going to waste I obviously went to this bike here and those are 2005 which is the other bike those are 2005 front brake discs and brake calipers um, custom hill brake uh, lines um, horn going up in underneath relocated to underneath as before um the um radiator brackets are made by a friend in canada uh, a guy called custom the uh, bolts here retaining bolts for them and the upper fairing bolt uh and the uh the upper radiator mounting bolt, I uh, I made those myself, machined those myself uh, in titanium. The um, this bike also, and I forgot to mention it on the other bike, has been converted to uh, stick coils um, rather than the the stock coils, and uh, gives it a much cleaner look underneath. It has Ivan's block off plates, um, uh, whereas the other one has Muzzy block off plates. 
This one has uh, the stock radiator hoses. It has the um, the Greg Couch um, oil lines, but I'm using the uh, the stock um, oil reel, but Greg Couch uh, um, oil line banjo or, or uh, yeah oil line his oil his own oil line banjo bolts. That one over there has the Greg Crouch um, oil line. This one has the, uh, the ZZR 1200 um, engine casing like the other one has. Although that other engine casing, uh, clutch casing, will be changed out to a DEG one, which is uh, the Japanese only uh, version of... Um, uh, the ZRX that was actually a fuel it, they 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 uh, made that one for the last two years of its um, run as fuel injected because wouldn't pass emissions over here and uh, but anyway it's a nice uh, uh, clutch cover has uh, Kawasaki um, uh, logo in the. Uh, in the main part of the body of it and a few other little bits and pieces so got one for the other bike this and uh, but that's a ZZR 1200 one and once again like with the other bike you can see the oil level a little bit below the um the full line because these um ZR, ZZR uh, uh, clutch covers are have a like I mentioned in the other video, the um, the oil uh, uh, sight glass is a little bit bigger and a little bit higher up, so you've got to be careful where you fill the oil to. This one has um, a more wacky uh, uh, oil filler cap, and just like with the other bike, all the um, the uh, the engine casing bolts have been changed out to uh, titanium um, flange head bolts. The um, frame plug, it's hard to get a good view of it because I know it's a dull day, it's not a very sort of great photograph, you know, but anyway, that's my own frame plug design there. No, 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 it's terrible, terrible the way it's exposing that. Um, the uh, the carbs on this bike, oh, I and the uh, the valve cover is uh, powder coated black as well, like with the other bike. The uh, the carbs in this bike are the stock CVK thirty sixes, um, and I'm you can see there I'm running uh, pod filters. Uh, so, and um, uh, a uh, uh, the exhaust is um, is uh, a Black Widow exhaust, and it's uh, it's um, a different end can. I think it's a Dan Moto uh, end can on this bike. The um, so the, the anyway the uh, the stock carburetors are. Uh, uh, I've been rejetted uh, factory pro stage three jet kit in them. The um, running the stock foot pegs and and uh, brake pedals etc. Um, the uh, the pivot pins for that are uh, are machine stainless steel ones. The um, carbon fiber heel plate. The um, shocks on this bike are, again, the 2005 shocks um, on this bike. Um, swing and arm is a, from the 2005 bike also. These chain adjusters, eccentric chain adjusters, are made by Pulse Performance, uh, Scott Stitz or Stites, whatever way you pronounce his name, and uh, they were part of a group by um, Billet Aluminium 
um, you just put a hex or a 3.8 um, uh, socket set in there and you adjust them. First of all, you've got to obviously loosen the pinch bolts, etc. But um, uh, much beautiful pieces uh, in comparison to the stock ones. The um, the rear the rear brake torque arm is a Greg Couch one with titanium fixings, stock rear um, caliper. That's an Arashi. Uh, brake, uh, rear brake disc and the stock 2005 um, rear wheel um, let me see I'll get on round here the indicators like with on the other bike are uh, two sets of rear um, ZX9R uh, indicators because I just do not like the wee small ones that a lot of people put on and and I wanted something that was very similar to the uh, the stock ones but the stock ones are just too big and bulky but I wanted to retain that kind of you know original look so those are just a marginally smaller version than the original ones um, so we'll get on around the other side here now I'm running a Renthal 44mm rear uh, brake disc on this, or brake, uh, brake, uh, <laughs> rear sprocket on this bike. Let me see the eccentrics. The axle is uh, at my own um, titanium uh, rear axle uh, that I machined. The, um, uh, Chain guard is an exact copy of the uh, stock one. The, the a friend of mine in England had sent the um, the uh, the stock um, chain guard off to someone who had done a mould, and they only made I think for us they only made three three uh, of these chain guards that are ex i mean i know you can get chain guards for z or x's that are in carbon fiber but this is an exact copy of the original uh in that shape in every way so um but anyway this is one of them and i think he's got one and uh our ash in uh, in the us has got the other one um the uh let me see the the um, uh, foot peg hangers again, carbon fiber, stainless steel uh, um, uh, foot peg pins. I'm retaining the uh, the stock, uh, the rear foot peg hangers and everything on this bike, um, uh, unlike the other one, which is uh, that's all been taken off. Uh, you get a better view of that frame plug here? No, it's it's, it's not great. Um, again, like with the other bike, the chain, um, or sorry, the uh, the speedo is driven off this um, this cutaway uh, front sprocket uh, cover. Frontal part is made by Greg Couch in the U.S., and this adapter plate is made by. As part of a group by Scott Stites uh, of Pulp Performance in America, and like with the other bike, uh, once again it's driven via this um, coupling off the counter shaft, going into a VFR750 um, speedo drive and a CB CB1000 or whatever it is um, cable. Uh, up to the uh, up to the clocks, the um, the clutch slave cylinder on this bike is an Oberon um, one. The, the last one, or the one on the other bike, is K Factory. Makes no difference really. You know they're both beautiful uh, pieces. Now with the other bike, like I was saying, um, although I'm not using. Um, I'm using stock carbs in this here. Once again, this is a UK bike, 
and the heater uh, carb de-icing system that would have the would come across the uh, underside of the carbs would link into a little pipe that would go down and uh, into this uh, um, water pump uh, pipe. Now with the other bike, what I'd done is I'd changed these, uh, this pipe plus the other one that's up behind the back of the engine uh, to the American ones because the British ones, as you can see, has like a little kind of a, like a little nipple that comes up out of the, uh, that pipe. And, uh, but on this bike, I, I thought, well, look, I'm not going to change them. Um, so on the little nipple itself, I, um, I drilled it and threaded it and, um, uh, and tapped in a, uh, I think it was an M4 stainless steel screw, put it in with red thread lock, and then I put uh, one of these vacuum caps over it with a clamp, so it's it's never going to leak. And I uh, did exactly the same with this. Can you see, you can just about see it, see the corner of that pipe there? Um, just up in there. Uh, did the same with that up in there. Like with the other bike, oh, I better switch that pedal. That's a that's a, a Pingle fuel tap on this bike, which is a manual, gravity fed um, one. And uh, just like what I was saying there, you got to remember to switch them off because uh, um, if you don't, uh, you get water or water, you'd get petrol coming down and getting into the uh, the carbs. And if you didn't keep an eye on it. Say you had a stick and float uh, valve or a stick and float or whatever, anything, and uh, the petrol could flood past that and get down into the crankcase. So you've got to always remember to switch all of that off, the petrol off each and every time. Um, and uh, But uh, if you're going to use a manual tap, um, you have to use, these are stock carbs. Uh, but uh, the, the carbs in the other bike are three see, uh, Yoshimura flat slides and uh, they won't work off uh, a vacuum um, uh, stock tap so you have to have a manual one and I just uh, I liked it so much that I, that I put one on this bike too this uh, this uh, cover here uh, ignition cover is um, uh, Kawasaki ZZR and behind that is a, uh, a plus four advancer plate uh, I think it's a, 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 a expensive lightweight stuff uh, uh, Pete Aronson one um, uh, and it's in behind there so there's that the um, the uh, again that's the other side that's the other uh, the other radiator bracket um see these uh, little little uh, screws and all that i made there um made another little blanking button here because obviously there's no speedo drive because it's being driven off the front uh, another thing i wanted to say was that i didn't mention it on the other bike was uh, because you're doing away with speedo drive um I had a machine this uh, spacer here and I wanted to machine it in such a way that it actually mimicked the shape of what it would be like on the other side of the wheel see that it's, it's similar to that but it's obviously longer uh, part on it here because um, on account of where the speedo drive would be so so that one's done on stainless steel. The prototype for that, I made an aluminium and it's on this 2005 bike. Uh, may as well show you it while I'm here. Yeah, there's it there. It's, uh, it's the prototype. It's the first one that I ever made and I, 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 I put it on this bike here and, and then I copied it. And uh, also this one here has a titanium um, wheel axle. And, but this one doesn't. This one's uh, just a stock wheel axle, front wheel axle. It has the um, the other one has a Ray Brig front headlight. This one's got the stock front headlight. It's got uh, tell you what it has. Uh, it's got the uh, the two thousand and five top and bottom 
um, yokes, steering yokes. The other one has um, has billet yokes, and uh, these were in super condition, and uh, so I put them onto this bike. Stock 2005 ones, or Stock 2001 ones, which is what this bike is. They would be that would be black, and uh, and that would be also um, gloss black. And uh, but the 05 has like a metallic, a metallic black color, the same as the frame. So anyway, I, so I I have these on. The, those are 05 ones uh, on this bike. Um, the other thing is that these uh, handlebars are 2005. You'll see that because they're um, they're gold and they're aluminium actually. The uh, 2001 handlebars are uh, are steel and they're um, they're gloss black. But I like the bars on that 05 so much that uh, that I put them on this. <coughs> so. The other thing is, this bike here is a UK bike, and it's on 2001, and as a result, you can actually, you know, you can switch the lights on and off with this bike, whereas with the 2005, you can't do that. It's, <coughs> excuse me, it has been changed. They have changed the regulations and that, and so whenever you put the key in, turn the ignition on, the lights just come on automatically, but I like the facility of being able to actually switch them on and off. Uh, these are 01 clocks, and you can see that because of the, um, see the little blue uh, kilometer um, ring indicator there? 2005 one doesn't have that. They are, um, they're all white, you know, they're different, you know. Other thing I didn't mention last week on this uh, 05 bike was because I've put these um, these uh, flat slide carbs on and there's uh, a manual choke on there. I, uh, you know, the normal choke would, uh, uh, there's a lever and I didn't like that, you know, because, well, obviously you're not using it anymore. And uh, so I changed these, um, this switch gear out, rewired it and everything to, uh, I think it was an ER651, so that it's a completely factory look there. And it also has uh, these hazard warning lights, you know, uh, if you wanted that extra facility. And it has also the uh, uh, pass uh, flasher on it there if you want to use it. But, you know, a stock one there, once you take the, you can take the lever off, but you're left with a hole in the side and it's very unsightly looking. So, uh, um, you know, I changed it to that uh, and uh, I, I didn't, I didn't get mentioned in that. But anyway, so you can see here on the 05, on the 01, that lever, you know, for the choke. But uh, as I say, you can take it off, but then you're left with a, you're left with this sort of slot and you're left with this um, thing. But, um it's needed on this bike because these are stock carbs. Now here's another thing that I didn't mention last uh, on the last video. And this bike has exactly the same conversion as the other one. Uh, the 05. I forgot to mention it is that the oil pan on this bike has been changed out. I changed it out to a Kawasaki Concourse uh, oil pan. Because the, um, the stock oil pan has a big... I I refer to it as like a sort of like a cow, like a cow's udder hangs right down here, uh, actually below the level of the exhaust pipe, and uh, I never ever liked that. I thought, goodness, that's that's awful looking. And also, as you're riding along the the uh, the, the the debris, uh, no matter what you do, it gets completely pebble dashed across the front here, and you're forever kind of. Um, well, it depends how fussy you are, but you're forever kind of, you know, trying to paint it in again. And I, I, no, I just didn't like it. So I changed it out to a concourse oil pan, which is a much flatter oil pan, as you can see. And uh, and then I made these wee, um, the, because you see the standard one, but the, 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 the bottom oil line would come round and link in and in a different place. 
so I had to make these adapters and different things for the oil line. The oil line, let me see, on this bike is, is there. Is there. Now, it doesn't look like it, but there is clearance between the between it and the exhaust. And, uh, yeah, so it, 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 uh, much, much, much cleaner, cleaner look. And I'm very happy with it, you know. So, um, I'm a done it on, I done it on the other, I done it on the 05 as well. Let's see, I'll show you that one. Um, on the 05. See? Just done exactly the same thing. Again, you see that oil pipe there? That oil pipe there on the on the uh, on the stock uh, oil pan. It's a much longer oil pipe, and it comes around and curls around at the front. And of course, I made additional um, adapters. And uh, let me see, that one is is an adapter. And uh, and these uh, banjo bolt or banjo bolts there are uh, they're my own creation as well. It also has two drain plugs, believe it or not. <laughs> and um, because the the concourse that that this is off has an oil cooler, and this bike doesn't doesn't have that. Um. So um. But anyway, you know. So that bike there. Although it's a kind of a mishmash of um, of 2001 and 2005 parts, uh, some parts are 2005, some parts are 2001. It's a 2001 bike, as can be. You can see that clearly. It has a gloss black frame there, whereas the other one's frame is that uh, is that uh, like metallic charcoal metallic grey this one here is is not that's that's gloss black there you know your 2005 bike also forgot to mention as well um these clock uh surrounds are to one on this bike the 2001 uh ones i bought them because i like them being gloss black um Whereas the 05 ones are like that metallic grey, and I didn't didn't want that for this bike because everything else is is uh, you know the the top of the uh, and that and that there, believe it or not, that's an 01 as well because that's gloss black, uh, and 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 so I wanted the clock clocks around the match. Um, the dash on the inside of that uh, dash panel on the inside of that again is uh, from Peter in Belgium. That's a carbon fibre one, and you can see there it has a has a manual uh, fan switch. See it? This one over here, uh, it's the stock one, but it's also got the manual fan switch. And uh, also, I I done a wee conversion there. I put a wee clock in it as well. We'll set the time on it. Um, but uh, uh, no, that's a that's I, I'm I'm really happy with that. Like. You know, um, whenever I'm seen out and about in that one, there people think I'm out in that one, and uh, <laughs> vice versa. You know, but uh, anyway, look, I'm going to uh, let's see if I can find the key. Uh, it's the same thing. It also has that. Um, you know, there's obviously no wear box in it, and it has been. You know, it's got that uh, storage box by expensive lightweight stuff. There's an orby thing there. I'm just noticing in the background. Um, didn't mention it. Uh, crankcase breather. That's my own crankcase breather there. Um, machine. You can see the holes are just in behind the mesh there, in behind the gauze. I made all that. Um, and that's coming off. Uh, see, normally what you would have is you would have a pipe there that's that's that that links up into the uh, the air box and. Um, but that's not there, you know. You've got this, um, you got this storage box, and you've got that big amount of storage underneath. Now, as a result of it, it has the stock um, cam chain tensioner, but I machined the uh, the titanium uh, 
uh, bolts and stuff for it there, you know, just to tidy it up and make it much, um, much more presentable looking. But uh, let me see, where's the key for it? Oh yeah, I've got the key for it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna start it up now. It'll be a different sound from the kirker of the other one, but anyway, there, in we go. Uh, put the petrol on this time. Uh, petrol on the uh, reserve. There's not a big lot of juice in it. Put the choke on. Well, it's really an enricher, you know, but I mean, anyway. Hit the button. <laughs> This one um, decided that he wanted one and he bought it. And uh, it was pretty rough now, to be honest, whenever he bought it. And uh, and he was gonna he was gonna build it into something that was nice, you know. And then he and then he thought he didn't have the facilities, you know. He just had a shed rather than a than a garage. And they'd already got a Yamaha XJ or I think it was a 1200 one. And uh, and then he just said, look, he, he rung me up after a, a number of months and said, I've got your next project, Ran. So um, uh, I came and bought it. And um, actually, after building this one, I was glad of another project to build. And uh, uh, like I say, I had a load of parts left over after building this one because I put all the bells and whistles on this one. And uh, I thought, you know, actually got enough parts left over to make a really nice bike and uh, you know out of it and um, so as I say I got the I got the uh, I got the paintwork and all done and then but again it was it was uh, you know, it wasn't like uh, a simple build just stick a load of parts on it it was um, it was taken down to the frame once again and everything was redone and you know I mean everything was redone and uh, you know, I mean, I just wanted to make a really nice, rideable, usable bike from it and uh, just go over absolutely everything. And, uh, but, uh, yeah. Lovely bark off it there. switch this petrol off again <laughs> um, but uh, there it is witnessed you've seen it happening um, but yeah yeah I'm, I'm over the moon with that one and uh, you know I mean people say to me oh well here are you not going to put Olin's forks in it? are you not going to put Olin's shocks on it or are you not going to change well no I'm not going to do any of that on this bike because I've done all that with this bike and um, and there's no point in having two the same, and and then of course I've just finished the Suzuki as well, so um, uh, no I wanted I wanted the bike to be uh, to be all um, stock Kawasaki parts. Now I'll tell you what I have for it. I have um, I have a Kawasaki ZZR twelve hundred um, pistons for it and uh, and cams for it, and. Um, yeah, I might. I'm, I actually might put those in now. You know, I mean, you can put the pistons in because they're a slightly higher compression. Uh, not much, but you know, I think it's another half a point or a point or something. You know, but I mean, you can put those in, and the the cams in as well, and uh, and and give it a wee bit more lift too. You know, and while I'm in there, I could delete the base gasket. You know. 
um, the block base gasket. But you know, I don't know. I, th I, I don't think I'll be bothered. You be honest with me. I'll, I'll if I'm going to do it, I'll just stick the pistons in and the cams in, and uh, and leave it at that. You know, because of all that to do on that bike. You know what I mean? Like I have six speed gearbox and everything to go into that bike at some point and uh and big high compression 1224 pistons and stuff in it but um no i, I just wanna i just wanna uh you know not mess about with this too much you know because uh oh why the other thing is you'll have noticed it's got similar it's got one of these uh it's got one of these similar uh not politically correct named wog seats because it's made by Paul Wog, not that there's anything sort of, uh, not that there's anything wrong with that, <laughs> not that there's any uh, um, uh, any intention of uh, racism or anything with that. There, it's just that's the name, that's his name, Paul Wog. So uh, he makes those seats, and uh, and they're uh, they're a lovely, comfortable seat, and um, so uh, actually a friend in. Um, in America, Gordon Geisler, he he uh, he sent me this over, and uh, I'm very very attached to it. And then uh, and then uh, so I thought, well, you know, I'm going to get another one for this bike. Um, and uh, matter of fact, I had that one on that bike first. I had the one that's on this bike on the O5, and then uh, and then and then when I started using this as my daily rider, um, after getting it done, I thought, well. I want the seat, so I took the seat off the old five and put it onto this, and then it meant I needed another one for this bike. That's the way it was. All right, so uh, I got a second one for this for this bike here. But um, yeah, it's uh, there. They are the terrible twins, you know, and uh, I'm more than happy with them. I'm uh, over the moon with them, actually, to be honest with you. And uh, thanks for tuning in and looking at the looking at the videos. Another big, uh, there was another big thread on that bike there, uh, that old one, um, uh, on the uh, ZRX uh, Owners Association um, OA forum, and uh, it uh, it shows all the uh, ups and downs of uh, from when I started and you know how I built it and everything you know. So, um, but anyway, I just wanted to post it up there and let you see it. And, uh, and then maybe mention a couple of other wee bits and pieces that I'd forgot to mention uh, with the uh, with the 051 um, and I dare say as soon as I shut this off I'll remember there's a whole heap more stuff that I forgot to mention too you know so uh, but rather than another update video on the 05 I just thought I would lump it lump them all in together because you know the concourse oil pan etc is uh, is on both bikes so um but anyway there it is lads thanks a million i uh, hope you enjoy it hope you enjoy it thanks a million bye bye